take me back to March because this was a big issue. The stock sold off like 30 percent when there was apparently some data that showed that what the drug didn't meet some sort of efficacy requirements and it was pulled. What, explain that to me. Yeah, sure. So what happened in March was basically the trial had what's called a futility analysis. Mm -hmm. So they look at, most trials have these things. You don't necessarily know when they are, but um, when the company did the analysis on the 1,700 odd number of patients that had reached the uh, required uh, status in the trial, uh, they said it, it, it doesn't seem that it's going to work. Mm -hmm. So what's happened today is they say now we've had more patients added, say about 300 more patients, so just over 2,000, and they say right now we think that actually the trial worked, mm -hmm. well the trials, so there's two trials right. in there and there's uh, some key nuances in there. Sam, what does this say about where this drug could go? I Beta amyloid treatments have not been very successful. In fact, this could be the first one that could potentially get approval. If it was to do so, how much could it be worth? And does this open the door up to, to other drugs that are pursuing similar lines of inquiry? Right. Lots of uh, very good questions there, Guy. At the end of the day, there are so many nuances in these trials. How early you're treating patients, what stage of the development they're at, how good your drug is in terms of getting into the brain or interacting with this beta amyloid. So the read-through is going to happen and is happening today, as you've seen, with Morphosis, uh, share prices being up because they've got potential royalties coming from a similar drug from Roche. But the point is that I think we need a good dose of skepticism here. As much as I would like to see these drugs succeed, given the massive potential that these uh, uh, products have, but also the massive need out there in terms of Alzheimer's, there are lots of nuances within what Biogen has said today that we should really reserve judgment until the full data is presented and the FDA gets an opportunity to really dig into that data. So I'm still a bit skeptical. So when we talk about the future of Biogen here, uh, one of the reasons why the stock has been so volatile surrounding this particular drug is because their current stable of drugs is heavily weighted towards multiple sclerosis treatments. Most of those drugs are moving into, I guess, the late cycle of their sort of patent right. protection. If this doesn't work out for Biogen with regards to the Alzheimer's drugs, what's the future of this company? So, so Biogen's pipeline, mm -hmm. which, if you look at it, it, it's full of drugs that are really trying to treat very difficult to treat diseases. Mm -hmm. The next one is motor neuron disease, right. amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Um, if that works too, you've got a potential multi-billion dollar sales uh, drug there. So, and on multiple sclerosis, they're suffering from strong competition from the likes of Roche and soon potentially from uh, Novartis. So th this is what they do. They, they take big bets on very difficult to treat areas and hope that it hits. Without this, obviously they're back to square one and then they would be waiting to see if one of the other pipeline drugs show success. Sam, how often does this happen? You get a failure and then you come back with more late stage data and the FDA go, you know what, let's give this one a go. Yeah, I mean, you can go to the FDA and have discussions with them and say, this is our data, and they go, well, we're not going to discourage you from filing, because at the end of the day, these tr this data will have to be scrutinized by what's called an ADCOM, an advisory committee of 12, 14, 16 scientists, physicians, who will pour over the data and tear it apart. Um, it does happen. Um, it, some people call it data dredging. Um, let's say that it's just data evolution, whichever way we want to call it. But it does happen, not very often. Um, and it's rare that it comes back this strongly and then the company suggests that they're going to apply to the FDA. But it does happen. And to an answer to your previous question, the size of this market is, is anyone's guess. You, you assume a $200,000 sales per year and imagine how many years an Alzheimer patient has to be treated. It can be multi, multi-billion dollars. Uh, so, Sam, we're seeing some other biotech stocks move on this. I'm wondering that, uh, given the optimism around the announcement today and the potential pathway that this, for this being approved, uh, are there other sort of stocks uh, in this sort of universe that could potentially benefit from Biogen success? Sure. Well, Lilly reports tomorrow, mm -hmm. and they have programs in Alzheimer's disease, although they've suffered the same fate. So is it possible that Lilly, a scientist, will be going back and digging in and see what's going on? Perhaps they could do some data work also, maybe more patients. Um, uh, BioArctic in, in, in Europe is, is a direct uh, beneficiary. ESI in Japan mm. is a partner with Biogen. So yeah, there's lots of companies who are looking uh, at the disease, at this area. It also gives hope for the whole sector. But as I said, we remain cautiously optimistic or um, still wondering, want to see more detail from this data.